So actually female, no. no. Ah. I look at the years, the size of the years, you know female. Oh, no. love my. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready, bro? Okay, ready. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome back to uh, another episode of for season three. And uh, this one is our second episode of uh, for the our series called UFO Reveal Asia or Euphoras for short. And with me in studio for the third season running, our homegrown resident ufologist is back in town and in studio with me. And he is none other than Ignatius Bong. Welcome back, Bong. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, Chris. Thank Love you the t-shirt, man, bro. Love <coughs> the t-shirt, man. Yeah, damn nice. Right. Killer. Area 51. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's right. For the vacation, you'll never forget. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> you get abducted. You yeah. get abducted, you never come back. Correct, man. <laughs> yeah, so I see you have a friend here today. Uh, very yeah, nice. your first time you're meeting him, huh? Yeah, first time meeting him. Gurmit Singh met him already. Oh, is it? Oh, and let me okay. tell you about this guy, okay? Mm. This guy, this guy, my dear friend. Mm-hmm. His name is Ubi Kayu. Ubi Kayu, very nice. Yeah. Huh. And I, I got it wrong the first time around because I, I told Gurmit on uh, the last uh, previous episode, I said to him that this guy came all the way from the binary star system Zet- Zeta Reticuli, that's true. I see. But he is not a Zeta Reticulin. I see. I thought he's he, an Eben. Oh, it's an Eben. Do you know, do you know yeah, officially no, I, that's what they call? Yeah, I thought he came from Kamangan. Because uh, Ubi Kayu, right? Or what's Co- name? Uh, Ubi- correct. <laughs> what, what do you think? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Why? Why do you think Kamangan when it comes to Ubi Kayu? <laughs> I would have thought maybe Katung. No, why? no, no. Ubi Kayu because I, last time, you know, I Katung boy. So I go to Kamangan. Uh. We got this auntie selling in a basket or like eight. You no know. fucking I bought, right? way. Yeah, my grandmother bought la, last Seriously? time. Yeah, a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Yes. So Is that a his- historical fact? Historical yeah. fact. Yes. Okay. For those who grew up in the East. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so this guy is from the Zeta. Zeta Reticuli, okay, man. In the yeah, binary yeah. star binary system, star, 38 yeah. light years away from Earth. Yeah, man. Right? Yeah. And uh, actually, to <laughs> people who really think I'm a quack again, um, they are actually called Ebens. That's right. And you want to yeah. know the story, man, before we start the, the yes. topic for today? Yes, please. Because David Adair, you heard of him? Yes, I have. David Adair said that uh, based on certain things that he found out and he knew about. And there, there apparently there have been declassified files. Okay, so it's not exactly a kooky thing. Mm-hmm. Um, they're called Ebens because that's how they introduce themselves. Mm-hmm. These people, these so-called ETs, call themselves Ebens from Zeta Reticuli and they had a treaty. These are the tall greys, not mm-hmm. the short ones. Mm-hmm. The Tall Greys, the Ebens, had a treaty with the US government, allegedly. Mm -hmm. And there was an exchange program. I see. 16 of their people, the Americans, in exchange for three of them, three to come to Earth, 16 to go over there. That was in the 1960s, early 60s. Mm -hmm. Until today, we still don't know what happened to the 16. <laughs> yeah, okay. So this was actually uh, uh, just to be a bit uh, to talk a little bit about pop culture. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this was one of the um, what do you call it um, storylines uh, that Steven Spielberg used for Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, towards the last part where you have these uh, people dressed very well with sunglasses before they boarded the plane. Right. Oh, sorry, not the plane. They, they boarded the saucer to go up. Yeah. It was taken actually from the story of this. Yeah, he did some research about this. Exactly, yes. exactly. Mm. Everyone, everyone who talks about this, about this particular story you just told me, mm. always say the ufologists, um, the closest thing in what Hollywood had produced from day one mm-hmm. that we, if we want to have a real reference point of mm. what is said to have truly happened, yeah, uh, is actually Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Yes, and that's where uh, the whole conspiracy theory about um. Hollywood slowly trying to get the people of the world Mm -hmm. to get used to the idea of uh, space travel, of ET, uh, because we don't know if one day there's really going to be a full on, full blast um, um, first contact, Mm -hmm. Yes, right? So, and and, uh, what's his name now? The guy that was a consultant for that movie um, was Dr. Heineck. Yes, and also Jacques Jacques Vallée. Jacques Vallée. Jacques Vallée, correct. Yeah. That's right. And and these guys were consultants. And you know that uh J. Allen Hynek was the uh, the person that was very, very much involved mm-hmm. in Project Blue Book. Blue Book, yes. Mm. Uh for the Air Force, right? 
so it was it's really, I mean, when you put two and two together, I mean, it does seem or does sound rather plausible. Uh, mm -hmm. You know? It's true. Yeah, because uh what happened was that uh during that time in the 1970s, uh, mm. uh most people were writing on this Star Wars uh space science fiction theme. Yeah, yeah. that came back very strongly. Yeah. And it was very strong in the 1940s and 50s. Mm. So then uh, of course the flavor changed and then when Star Wars came about, so close encounters. Uh, came about. Close Encounters, like what you mentioned, is very true. Uh, it's very factual because a lot, a lot of uh, research went into it. Yeah. And Steven Spielberg himself is a believer in yep. this thing. And uh, if you follow the story, it's actually more of a docu drama. It's not so much as a just a movie yeah. because there's a lot of points that he was trying to put all together into one show. Yeah. So uh, it was very, uh, I think very forward looking in his time. Yeah. And I was quite well received. By yeah, him. but also now that you said this, I mean, you know that one of the main aspects of the show is how they were trying to decipher the communication with the aliens, right? Mm -hmm. And they use a tune, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Do, 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 do. Remember that tune? Yes, correct. Um, and when you watch Skinwalker Ranch mm -hmm. and you see that it, uh, when it comes to radio waves, right? Mm -hmm. There is a particular <coughs> transmission signal. Correct. Yep. I think it's 16 megahertz. Mm -hmm or 16.5 megahertz yeah. that is actually from Earth to space, yes. which is what NASA uses. Yeah. And every time they were to send out radio waves of that particular signal, they actually get a response. Correct. Where if you repeat a signal, the same response of the same repeated signal bounces back to yes, you. Yes, correct. Um, so think about it. I mean, you know, what's really happening in Skinwalker Ranch and all the experiments you're doing there, mm -hmm that we can watch on, on you know, on, on their doc, doc, documentary show, right? Yeah. Uh, it's been on for a decade, for a decade plus already. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you watch Close Encounters of the Third Kind, mm -hmm. it's quite similar, man. Yes, correct. <clears throat> because actually the, uh, what most people think, and some of them are quite, quite accurate, the language which is universal mm. is either mathematics yeah. or music. Yeah. I think this is uh, something that you can- Binary, actually, binary. Yeah, binary. Go into <laughs> interdimensions, you know, and then we can actually u utilize them. Yeah. That's what people say. Lang these are the two languages. Yeah. That means you can actually communicate with people. Um, of course, um, like what you mentioned, the uh, the, the series on, on uh, I think on the History Channel. Yeah. It's called the Skinwalker Ranch. Right. So that's very interesting. For those of you who have not seen it, I think uh, advisable to go and have a look to get a very big, bigger picture of what is happening. So research is being done on all fronts. Mm. The Skinwalker Ranch is actually made up of a lot of uh, scientists and they just want to get the data out yeah. and to prove it yeah. to the world. So yeah. I think that's very interesting. And uh, it's now exploding around the world mm. uh, in terms of <clears throat> the US government. Mm. Uh, the Congress are actually very active into trying to find out more information as to what this information, what this thing is about because it's being hidden from yep. the American public. Yep. So uh, they find a lot of roadblocks along the way. So um, it's very interesting because uh, they mentioned that this year, 2024, many much more information will come up from whistleblowers. Actually, uh, since last year's Congress to now, that we talked about that over the last couple of episodes, right? Mm -hmm. There have been a lot more roadblocks. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it reached a stage where I don't know what's happening now, to be fair, that I heard is come to a break, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, then again, I can't confirm. However, more and more whistleblowers started to come forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a lot of unprecedented things that have been going on. Yes. Uh, okay, anyway, today's topic we're talking about. Um, we're talking about how this friend uh, <laughs> has been around since the dawn of time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, um, the word, the very famous word, it's called ancient aliens. No, the ancient uh, astronaut theory. Uh, ancient astronaut theory. Mm. Okay, so um, this, um, some of you, uh, which I spoke with yeah. uh, since this season started, a lot of people, they just give me a blank space look. Same. They, they, they don't, they don't, what, what are you talking about? What, what, can you please explain to me? You know, they don't really know what is happening. Only a few percentage of people understand. Yeah. So they've been following this like like uh, episodes, and they said, "Oh, well, very interesting." You know, mm -hmm. you're building up something. So ancient aliens is basically uh, to fill up gaps uh, in archaeological records. Yeah. Uh, what we call uh, out of place artifacts. Right. That means um, when we have the caveman period until modern day civilization, things that came out of nowhere, like the pyramids, is mm -hmm. what they call an out of place. It's really out of place mm -hmm. because the technology then. And the things that we see mm -hmm. does not reconcile together. Right. Yeah. So that's where we have this uh, theory that they were taught 
Yeah, men were taught, men were assisted by some other intelligent being right. to build this. Because as we just go briefly in later, we will see that uh, um, some of these things do carry weight, these theories that mm -hmm. uh, mankind was somehow taught to mm -hmm. do this. Because as an agrarian society, mm -hmm. people with chunkles, huh? okay, or holes. So <laughs> they use holes. <laughs> holes. <laughs> they use holes to dig yeah. holes. Oh, well, we so, know a lot of people know. use holes too. Yeah. <laughs> so like a lot of farmers, right? You know, that they're kind of hunter gatherers and all that. Yep. But to build something that is, uh, uh, magnificent, uh -huh. right? Uh, and also very accurate uh, yeah. geometrically and all that stuff. So um, it brings a lot of questions. Yeah, because the pyramids, right? Every side of the pyramid is exactly the same. Hmm. And uh, every one of these pyramids point to the same constellation. Yes. Right? Yeah. So the constellation, the thing is that um, uh, in, the, in the past, this uh, mystery has always been there. Yeah. Who built the pyramids? And of course, archaeology being mm, a science. Big archaeology. Uh, uh, I mean, norm, normal archaeology. Yeah, yeah. Mainstream that they, nowadays people call them big archaeology. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. So they have always had the final say. Who built it? Which was the year? Which yeah. pharaoh? Yeah. And how they do it is like, oh, very simple. They had this. But with technology, with time, as we get further down with our uh, information that we have and uh, things like uh, basically technology has improved, more questions come out. Mm -hmm. Rather than the questions do not uh, go together with what these uh, historians say. Yeah. Because it really conflicts whatever they said. Yeah. Right? So um, they find that uh, basically one of the first things they found was that the pyramid uh, aligns with true north. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So this is very accurate to the true north thing. So um, uh, to put it this way, the role of a compass. Yeah. Okay. In order to do this, you need to have a compass to yeah. actually build. Yeah. But um. I don't think so. They had that kind of a compass. Was there an understanding of uh, magnetism? Uh, magnetism, right? Yeah. And do that. And then to calculate the alignment using very sophisticated uh, algorithms. Right. Then you can build a pyramid. A absolute true. Absolute north. true, right? Yeah. So absolute true now. So um then um how do we get this near perfect alignment? Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, that, that's the question that we have. Yeah. So the pyramids is actually uh, a very big statement. Yeah. Uh, people will just say, oh yeah, yeah built by men. Of course, uh, Egyptians, they were very smart. They were doing that. So, but then again, if you really go into it, you ask these questions, then you will, you will know. You know, it's, it's quite difficult to build. Yeah, but I think, you know, when we think about this, you know, people say that Egyptians are smart and all that kind of stuff, but I mean, come on. I mean, think about this. I mean, humankind have transformed from hunter-gatherers into an agrarian society and into a true blue civilization that understood mathematics and understood astrology, mm. oh, sorry, I beg your pardon, astronomy, mm. astrology, <laughs> as Chinese New Year around the corner, uh, thinking uh, about astrology. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, who understand uh, astronomy, um, and and how would that be possible? And don't forget, you know, actually the Egyptians were considered a younger civilization. Mm -hmm. Why, Bong? Because you can find it anywhere online. The human race is said to be about only 6,000 years old. Mm -hmm. Stemming out of, and I said this is a pyramid, out of Mesopotamia, where the river Tigris and the Euphrates River rivers are. Mm -hmm. And then today's modern Iraq, yes. modern Iran, mm -hmm. right? Um, 6,000 years ago, when the Sumerians were considered to be the first civilization. So the Egyptians were younger a lot, mm -hmm. right? right? But even for that time, um, for ancient technology or engineering to come to that level, it's a bit astonishing yes, uh, because it took only a very short span of time for the human race to learn how to, well, form an organized society mm -hmm. uh, and to build uh, administrative centers like the Aztec, the Incas and Aztecs, mm -hmm. right? They've had an administration, you know? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's quite mind blowing to be honest. Yeah. Um, and then you have organized infrastructure mm -hmm. and then you can build stuff like the pyramids to that extent, yeah. you know, where even to the, by today's standards, we don't know how to do it. Correct. Because you, you know? see, like you mentioned, you got to you have a system of governance, yeah. a system of organization. Yeah. And then you want to build something like that, a monumental thing, which yeah. is huge. Okay, yeah. for some people, uh, uh, the men in the street, oh, the pyramid, yeah, I go on a holiday, I go to Egypt, uh, and then I see the thing, oh, very nice, the stone, the old people built. Now, actually, that is a very, uh, <laughs> very sad thing when I hear that, I cry. 
Because you see the stone, what, you know how heavy the stone? Yep, One block, yep, right? Yep, yep. Okay, no, no. They use rope, they pull. They got pulley system and all yep. that kind of. They organize the people into, that's what historians say. Yeah. So they built camps and then uh, they were not beaten. They were not slaves. They were paid a lot of money. Yeah, they were work gangs. Uh, work gangs. Yeah. So, so they were very motivated to build. Yeah. Okay, fine. We have this. Maybe we there, there's an element of truth there because they find all the, 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 sure. the artifacts. But then again, if you look deeper inside, uh, there's a lot of more questions will come up. Yeah, because yeah. The, because you can't explain the the engineering, man. Yeah, you just imagine, uh, mm. You talk about blocks, right? Yeah. F okay, fine. The old story we hear. Yeah. How did they do it? Yeah, police, and then how mm -hmm. maybe put on logs yeah, and move yeah, the great, great. move yeah. the blocks of limestone, yeah. blah blah right. blah. And then, but you have to think about it. One side of a pyramid, one side mm. of a pyramid. Yeah. You put those blocks. The base has got to be bigger, higher. Yeah. Then it gets smaller. Correct shorter yeah. and then so on and so forth until you reach the apex of the pyramid, yes, right? Correct. To do that, uh, using something that you, you like, like that you can put it on the table and build a fucking Lego out of yeah. it <laughs> is going to be quite a task, you know? Yeah, it's quite a task. Because the mathematical measurements and the exact, it's yeah. got to be so exact. Yes, it's got to be. So exact. that it will fit mm. and it will give you a perfect Fe pyramid, pyramid yes. site. Yeah. But don't forget, the sign we see is 2D. Mm. Inside the pyramid, the other parts of, of the of these stones will yeah. jut in, right? Yes. Correct. So it's 3D, man. Yeah. I mean, come on. Correct. How how can you imagine yeah. setting that all up? Correct. Then, it, you know, engineering wise is already quite something. Correct. Yeah. You know, and also the other thing is that um if uh, if I was an Egyptian, mm -hmm. because in uh, history, the Egyptians and the Chinese kept very good records of yep. their past. Yeah. So we don't really have a lot of details about how they built a pyramid, how they built. I mean, yeah. if if it was such an important uh, milestone in their civilization, they, they would have a separate chamber to explain how it was built and all that. But you get, in fact, more questions than than others. Yeah. And the other thing also is that the the pyramid the pyramids are aligned to Orion's belt. Yeah. So this one was actually uh, brought up by or studied by Robert Beauvoir. Yep. In 1993, mm. uh, he found that the three main pyramids uh, aligns with the main stars of Orion. The three stars, the, three right? stars. Like the slanted ones. The slanted ones. Yeah. And then um, this alignment, mm -hmm. if it was true, mm -hmm. okay, I mean, uh, they, they found that, they proven it. It was constructed about 12,000 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Not 4,500, like what historians say. So it's older. It's much older. So, right. so according to historians, mankind was not was still caveman at that period. Yeah, so, exactly. But it was yeah. built that, and it really matches. Mm. So in the uh, history of archaeology, or even until today, uh, uh, general uh, Egyptologists are very angry with mm. uh, concepts like that. Mm. They say, no, where's your evidence? Can yeah, you see yeah. the evidence? But actually, you know, if you were to just check this alignment. There's something wrong with, with big archaeology here. Mm. I mean, in the past when archaeology was kind of young, mm -hmm. people were excited to go out there and find new stuff. Yeah. And people were accepting new stuff. Yeah, correct. But as time went by, it seems like the narrative's been written. So let's not change the narrative. Yes, correct. Mm. Which means it's no longer science. Yes. Science is about discovering new stuff mm. and about challenging the norm. Correct. To yeah. see whether or not, you know, this theory or this thesis is right or wrong. Yes. So there's something wrong as far as I'm concerned where big archaeology is concerned. Mm. And when we think about coming back to the point about Orion's Belt, it's not difficult to prove based on modern technology. Yes, correct. Then yeah. when you have the three points of the pyramids in Giza mm -hmm. shooting straight up into the cosmos yeah. where Orion's belt is and the points actually align perfectly with the star to the three, yeah, the three stars of Orion belt. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, what, why not? Why, could, why don't you just see whether or not that works? Is, is it true? Look at the facts yeah. and then think about, hmm, maybe there's a point there yeah. instead of going, Oh, shut up, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's all rubbish. Yeah. I don't like hearing, yeah. listening to this kind yeah. of shit. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, I think that's really selfish. Yeah. And on top of that, big archaeology says that the pyramids were supposed to be the tomb, tombs of pharaohs. Yeah. Not a single mummy was ever found inside in any yeah, one of the these tombs. pyramids. Yeah, correct. The tombs have been in the Valley of the Kings mm. and they were in, not in fucking pyramids, okay? Yes, correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, what, what the fuck are you talking about, man? I mean, so what's it for, right? <laughs> to this day, there's still chambers inside the yeah. fucking pyramid yeah. that you don't even know leads to where and for what. Correct. Because the the the, the, the most I think for me the more scientific approach is the Orion's Belt theory mm. is linked, and uh, uh, what they call the true north. 
the yeah. true north yeah. positioning. Yeah. So somehow, right, this positioning, this is the one that I believe, I mean, mankind couldn't do this at that time, point in time. Yeah. Getting true north and getting the position of the Orion's belt and that's where we're going to build. Yeah. And then we're going to build a stones and everything up. Yeah. So building our stones, everybody can talk and argue and all that stuff. But yeah. this is the fact which I find, uh, which is a bit puzzling. Yeah. You know, how do you get a true north yeah. and that Orion belt in that same time space, yeah. time and space, and then you can actually accurately build your structure there. Exactly. There's there's, mm. there's no engineering or no technology available that we understand at yeah. this time. Yeah. You know, back way back when. Yeah. But the amazing concept is that when you travel around the world, mm -hmm. We think about this. Mankind and geometry. Yeah. We see pyramids just about in most major parts of the world, mm -hmm. in the continents of the world. Yeah. We go to South America or Central South America, yeah, not Central America. South America, mm -hmm. you'll find um Machu Picchu. Yeah. Right? Uh or is it called Olite? Olite. Only taste something, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, which is pretty amazing. Though, though, though that was pretty young, mm -hmm. uh, in thirteenth century or fourteenth century, mm -hmm. um, and and but the the steps and all that perfectly right angled. Mm -hmm. um, then you go down to Mexico, you will find the other one from the Incas. Yeah. Not wrong, the Mayans, Mayans. right? Mm -hmm. uh, the pyramids there. Yeah. Um, supposedly uh, uh, in China, I think the the mausoleum or Qin Shi Huang Ti. Mm is kind of like a pyramid yeah right um and and i mean across the the globe yes indonesia they yeah, have found yeah, yeah. One, right? in sumatra in sumatra yeah. so why mm. pyramids why why would human beings people people just think about building fucking pyramids mm. I mean, you just don't do, you be, always begin something with the end in mind, right? That's our psychology, isn't it? Yes. We want to do something because there's a reason behind us doing yeah. it, especially yeah. if we're considered to be so primitive at that point in time. Yeah, yeah talking about primitive, yeah. at that point in time, huh, we don't have like telephones to call each other, hey, <laughs> what's your design of a pyramid? Can you share with me? Yeah, yeah, but everyone seems to have the same mindset, yes. right? It was developed independently. Yeah, so yeah. this pyramid shape has was developed independently, even up to places like Croatia and yeah. also in China. Yeah, yeah, Croatia, they yeah. found a few, yeah. isn't it? And in China, which yeah. you cannot touch. The Chinese government don't allow any researchers to touch yeah. their, their, their undergrowth because this pyramids are grown over. So it's like a, this collective unconsciousness yes. to build to build, build this, geometry this geometry of triangles. Of and triangles. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Correct. Yeah. So the most obvious one, of course, is the Egyptian ones. Mm -hmm. So that one has been the mystery the of- The one cannot lari. Uh, cannot lari. <laughs> <laughs> so then again, we have uh, the scientists, uh, you know, they go to Mars Observer mm. and they go and uh, basically see the landscape of Mars. Yeah. They have also find these kind of ships. Yeah, but yeah. of course, you know, yeah. NASA said about that, right? Yeah, like, correct. So, so that's quite a bit NASA of stuff. NASA said, no, nah, uh, this is just geology, yeah, Martian geology. geology. Martian geology, yeah, yeah, correct. Fucking hell, you yeah, gotta have Google Mars and check <laughs> it out, man. Yeah, correct. Uh, but, um, you know, I give you, I throw you this, this other thing. Mm. We talk about pyramids being all over the world and, and people don't keep in touch with each other. They don't even know each other. They don't, yeah. they, these civilizations don't know, yeah. didn't know that the other existed, right? Yes, yeah. But they're all building the same kind of thing. Yes, correct. The same structures. Yeah. One more thing I've always wondered about. Foot reflexology. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you, you think about it, think about it. The Thais have their own. Yeah. The Indonesians have their own. The Chinese have their own. The Indians have their own. Okay. How the fuck did that happen? <laughs> I mean, I mean, and, 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 and on top of that, one says, oh, ours is the original. It's older than, than anything else. I said, balls. <laughs> Uh, the Indians say it, the Chinese say it. Look, Qin Shi Huang Di, wow. 1 BC, first fucking emperor of China. There are depictions, paintings of, of, of his subjects. You, you know the stick, yeah, using yeah. the stick and foot reflexology, man, yeah. on him. Yeah. I mean, there's one freaking BC. Yeah. And then some people say, oh, India brought it to China. Oh, for yeah. God's sake. <laughs> China was just unified at that time. Yes, yes. You know, I don't think so. Yeah. Which means that that art of foot reflexology or the science of it, whatever you want to call it, yeah. goes way back when. Correct. But then the Indians have it and then the, hey, yeah. the Thais have it. Yeah, this, this is the first time I'm hearing about foot reflexology. Yeah, but I, <laughs> I've been, I, look, this thing has been freaking driving me up the fucking wall <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> I, I know I'm sound like a nutcase, but think about that, yeah. man. Then you have different uh, 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 herbal or rather different remedies, you know, mm -hmm. like Ayurveda, yeah. Ayurvedic, which Ayur is Indian. Yeah. 
Then you have your Japanese shiatsu. Yeah. And then you have, but everything is about massaging you, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Where the fuck did that come from? Yeah. You know, so sometimes I think about, I mean, I mean, there's got to be a certain common thread, a commonality somewhere. Correct. Yeah. Right. That, that, you know, some people might think about Chris, shut the fuck up. Chris, yeah. it must have come from one country and then they travel in migration yeah. and all that. Yeah. So the, the, the other thing is about the uh, Egyptians. Uh, when, when we talk about pyramids, yeah. like what you mentioned earlier, part of the program, they are very near this place called Sumeria. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. Yeah. So, so uh, that whole hot, yeah, I call it a hot spot because right. uh, a lot of ancient uh, uh, alien theories, mm. they would like to go around that part of the world yeah. uh, because of the evidence they found in uh, Babylonian, uh, what they call it, cuneiform scribes, yeah. where they describe the beginning of the world. Yeah, but right? it's Sumerian, Sumerian. Uh, Sumerian, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. how they started, where they came from, who yeah. were all this. And then uh, it's very deep, like I mentioned, one whole, I uh, think you need two episodes of that just to talk about that uh, research as to uh, Anunnaki and all that stuff. Yeah, Anunnaki, yeah. yeah but, <laughs> very but, big, very but big. But yeah. if we just, mm. just to give humor to the to big archaeology where Sumeria is concerned, Imagine if they are touted to be the first official human civilization um, uh, that began, you know, way back when, mm -hmm. and they had cuneiform writing mm -hmm. in clay tablets. Mm -hmm. And Hammurabi was the one that gave out the tablet for the laws. Yeah, correct. And Hamur the code of Hammurabi, which became the basis for even lawyers today. Yeah. Right? Um, like this is where the first laws were ever enacted, yes. you know, in the world, mm -hmm. right? Uh, then again, we can always argue about that too. Yeah. Yeah. But, and, and, you know, how did even that happen? You know, it's, so, it's really quite, not just about engineering. It's also about laws. Mm -hmm. It's about administration. Yeah. And it's, it's that to me is already mind boggling. Yeah. But then when people say civilization is just 6,000 years old, mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, and, and and you know, it's been proven, carbon dated, that the oldest permanent human civilization is actually eleven thousand five hundred years old. Yeah, this is according to to them, you know. But um, no, 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 yeah, no, the, no, no, no. Uh, the Gobekli Tepe. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I've been talking about Gobekli Tepe all the time. Yeah, that's you know? in Turkey, by the way. Yeah, it's in uh, Turkey. Yeah, um, but it's older than Sumeria. Yeah, and it's they've only uncovered. Just five percent. Yes, very small fraction. Yeah. yeah, of 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 you know on that on that because Gobekli Gobekli Tepe actually means a mound. Mm -hmm. It's a huge plot of land. Yes, uh, and they've only uncovered five percent. Correct. And you know, if we talk about eleven thousand five hundred years old, some argue it could be ten thousand three hundred years mm -hmm. old. Who gives a fuck? It's still yeah. longer than six thousand years yeah. ago. Correct. During the Mesolithic period. It was said by big archaeology that humans were using small stone tools, sometimes crafted with points attached to antlers or bone mm -hmm. or wood to serve as spears and arrows. Mm -hmm. They lived nomadically mm -hmm. in camps near rivers and other bodies of water. Yeah. But then you have Gobekli Tepe. Correct. Which was a temple. Yes. Or whatever they've uncovered so far is a temple. Yes. So this brings to the general question. Mm -hmm. Okay, mankind, mm -hmm. uh, as a result, mm -hmm. we have this theory called, uh, uh, somebody must have shared this information with them uh -huh. or assisted them in building yeah. these things because uh, somehow people like to, like, like some people like maybe uh, Graham Hancock, mm -hmm. he says, no, it's not aliens. It's a lost civilization. That's where he comes about. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in Egypt, people talk, uh, I mean, they did some research on the Sphinx. Yeah. Right. It's basically not uh, desert erosion, but it's water erosion that caused the Sphinx to actually uh, look as it is now. Okay. Without yeah, the so, nose. Yeah, but, uh, no, no, the nose is different. <laughs> la. So they say the head was somehow chipped off to put the Pharaoh's head on it. The Sphinx head was something else. So you're saying that this, 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 this Pharaoh's head isn't original to the body? Isn't original to the body because the body is too large. It's something like an animal. So it's just not- It's not in- Proportionate. Not, not in proportion. Yeah. And this water erosion brings mankind back even further. They say yeah. the Sphinx was built before the pyramids. Yeah. And the Egyptians happened to be in their era where they owned the land yeah. and it became their legacy. So these are the things that actually uh, uh, bring a lot of questions rather than solutions. So they're saying that basically Graham Hancock is mm -hmm. saying that there was a civilization that is lost that predates that predates the Egyptians. Yes, correct. Holy that predates, shit! That predates us. 
So he was trying to say that uh, the last ice age yeah. wiped them out completely. Yeah. So we are a civilization who has amnesia. <laughs> Funny you mentioned this because yeah. when we when it comes to the last ice age, you know, for people, you might not be bothered, but fuck, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> the, look, the earth was hit by this humongous freaking asteroid that destroyed the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Mm -hmm. Then voila, the new world started to emerge. Yeah. Please do not think that there were no, no further cataclysms. Globally, mass extinction events that didn't happen. Yes. One that is, of, that is notable is called the Younger Dryers. Mm -hmm. This theory, and they named it called the Younger Dryers, happened 12,850 years ago. Yes. Okay. And that it is proposed, the hypothesis is that it is proposed that there was an airburst or an impact of a comet at that time, mm -hmm. resulting in a 1200 year long Younger Dryer's cooling period. Mm -hmm. And this contributed to the extinction of the Pleistocene megafauna in the Western hemisphere yeah. and the disappearance of the Clovis Paleo Indian culture. Mm -hmm. So it suggests, this theory suggests that longer than 12,850 years ago, <laughs> right. yeah. there were people. We got screwed by a common impact or yeah. a sonic or blast and yeah, airburst. That's right. Yeah? And the reason why th this theory came about was because of Gobekli Tepe. Tepe. Mm. There's a stone that is very much the, the, the point of study. It's called the vulture stone. Can we have the one up, please? Have we have we flashed out Gobekli Tepe, Ke, uh, Kai? Not yet. Okay, can we flash Gobekli Tepe up first? The reason why, Bong, let me just, since we're on this topic, right? I brought this image up. Mm -hmm. Take a look. Take a look at the right angles yeah, of those right. structures. Mm -hmm. 11,000 plus years back. Yeah. Right angles. Correct. There was um, we know anything that we find that's not natural, right? Mm, yeah. If you go, if you found something in the earth that's right angled, mm -hmm. we know it's man made. Mm -hmm. So that's man made. Yeah, definitely. But it's right angled, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I mean, eleven thousand, twelve thousand. Okay, let's just round it off. Yeah, twelve thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. How the heck? Don't talk about the pyramids, man. Yeah. This is longer than, yeah. older than the pyramids. Yeah. How the heck did they manage to do that? Today, to do that mm. is quite a feat in mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. Now then, mm. at that time, mm -hmm. how did these people do it? Correct. At the same time, the vulture stone, can we bring up the picture, please? Not that one. <laughs> oh, that looks like a pimple. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. This is the vulture stone. Uh -huh. Now, if you were to take a look at it carefully, right? The stone is decorated with a range of animal symbols. Mm -hmm. There's a scorpion, and ibex and birds, right? In various poses. Mm -hmm. At the bottom of the scene is an image of a headless man. Mm -hmm. While the top, you can see the border at the top, mm -hmm. there are large repeating arches and squares. Yeah. Now it is theorized, the headless man in this vulture stone depicted here could represent death and calamity mm -hmm. that hit humans at a time. And the strange symbols at the top, you see those zigzags, those squares and arches, mm -hmm. could represent comet fragments streaking across the sky. Mm -hmm. Around that time, a mini ice age known as the Younger Dryas began. Mm -hmm. It changed civilization forever, mm -hmm. lasted around a thousand years. Yeah. Now, this is considered a critical event for humanity. Mm -hmm. Some scientists believe the emergence of agriculture and city-states resulted from the low temperatures of the Younger Dryas. The temporary climatic shift depleted hunter-gatherer food sources. Mm -hmm. So it forced them into, you know, into becoming, to cultivate crops. Mm -hmm. In order to do that, you got to set up settlements, mm -hmm. settlements yeah. right? So they're saying that Gobekli Tepe was built by the survivors to commemorate this event. Mm -hmm. What happened in the sky and how it destroyed the world. Yeah. Now, they also suggest, so some parties, that this isn't just another Neolithic temple. Mm -hmm. 
but an ancient observatory used for monitoring the night sky. Mm -hmm. Because um, as I said, right, we, we don't know much more now. Mm -hmm. As of 2021, only 5% of the site has been excavated. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess in time, as they excavate more, we'll know more. Yeah, because this Ice Age um, thing that happens, um, mm -hmm. it's not only through science that we have all this, but through the word of mouth. Um, for example, biblical, biblical mm -hmm. uh, Christian biblical uh, books, they mm -hmm. write about this person called Noah yep. and the Ark. And uh, also you have many other- The deluge. Uh, uh, deluge, the, the cultures, they talk about a great flood yep. that killed many people or killed the whole world and mm -hmm. then it started again. Mm -hmm. So somehow uh, we cannot just isolate and say, oh, this is part of that religion or part of that culture. But actually if everybody says the same thing, that means something really big did mm -hmm. happen in the past that caused uh, things to change. So, um, talking about uh, since we are near Egypt, I also want to bring out another. Sorry, before you yeah. go there, I, I, there's mm. there's something interesting I I left out about go mm. back to Then we move on from that. Okay, that, sure. From that, I mean, I got my fix now for go back to <laughs> you know. But let me just finish it off this way, yeah. Uh. One theory suggests the symbols in the vulture stone that the animals correspond to ancient constellations. Huh? Mm -hmm. Now the scorpion, Scorpio, mm. um, the duck sort of duck-like, Libra. Mm. The wolf symbol, lupus. The circular shape in the center would represent the sun. Mm. Now, with all the symbols aligned, the stone represents the sky at a date and time when these constellations of the sun were aligned. Now, cross-checking the theory with computer simulations of the solar system at that time. Mm. Researchers propose that the carvings could describe a common impact that occurred around 10,000 950 BCE. Mm. So basically, all you do is just reverse engineer the whole thing, right? Yeah. Back to that period. Yeah. What are we looking at? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Maybe they could, they could tell that there, there would probably be some comets that we know of yeah. that went around at that point in time mm -hmm. and some fragments hit us. Yeah. Correct. I don't know. It's true, it's true. Yeah. yeah. But they did a cross-reference. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And they said it, 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 that it was perfect alignment anyway mm -hmm. where the, the carving proposes that it aligns mm -hmm. and it was exactly so when they actually cross-referenced the whole thing and reverse engineered it. Yes, correct. Yeah. 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 So for, for this uh, kind of uh, uh, artifacts that we have, it's basically what they say, cast in stone. It's virtually in stone. Yeah, yeah. So stone, stone, <laughs> stone, stone as a material cannot deteriorate. Yeah. Just like the pyramids, they're all in stone. Yeah. You, know, you can put in any other kind of uh, writing materials huh, for recording uh, history. But I think stone is still the only thing that happens. So this is the problem. I mean, or this this presence uh, presents a, a dilemma to mm. what historians say because historians say one thing, but the stone and the tells way, you another story. It's a very different story. Yeah. The the way it is built, the way it is planned. Yeah. Uh, it, it always uh, coincides with the star. Yeah. So um, so much so that sometimes uh. This is- uh, Too much of a coincidence? Uh, too much of a coincidence. Like the yes, Orion much, Belt yeah. and the three yeah. points of the pyramid and then right. now this one, the yes. vulture stone? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, you know, so um, many, many other uh, cultures in the world mm -hmm. also have uh, their own things to showcase. Yeah. Showcase or examples. Uh. Yeah. So one of them I want to bring now is the uh, Dogen tribe. I don't know whether you have heard of them. No man, it's new to me. Okay, so the Dogen is basically, uh, uh, they inhabit an area in Africa called Mali, M-A-L-I. Okay. So uh, they have about, uh, the it's basically a stretch of uh, sandstone cliffs. Uh, okay. okay. And then uh, they're about 1,500 feet high. So this tribe stays there. So what happened was in the 1930s, a French anthropologist, he mm. wanted to study about these tribes. He went there to stay with them. And uh, he found a very interesting thing. Mm -hmm. um, because they were very well versed in uh, astrology. Uh, not astrology, sorry. Astronomy. Uh, astronomy. <laughs> <laughs> I always get it wrong. Astronomy. <laughs> so uh, Chinese New Year. Uh, Chinese New Year. <laughs> killer balls. So they were very famous for this thing called the Sirius Star System. I don't know how to pronounce it. Sirius. Sirius. S I R I U S. Yeah, mm. Star System. So um, Sirius A, which yeah. is uh, uh, the name of a star system. Yeah, uh, yeah. The star you, you the can star. see. You can Sirius see. A. Yeah, yeah, seriously, you can see with a visible eye. Yeah. So I mean, there's nothing great. So yeah. so they have seen that. Um, but he has a companion companion white dwarf star called Sirius, Sirius B. B yeah. Right. So uh, Sirius B was not discovered until the 1950s yeah. by men, you yeah. know, I mean, by, by uh, scientists. Yeah. But ho however, the Dogen track, they knew about the existence of Sirius B. How the fuck? Yeah, how, how the hell? Huh? So they're very familiar with this entire star system. Mm. This is basically uh, what, what you call, uh, that, that 
the ancient civilization who, yeah. who are still alive, right? You know, so these beings, uh, they said, uh, a being, a group of people from the stars came down. They call themselves the Normos, and they imparted this information onto. What them. they call themselves again? Normos, N N O M M O S. Normos. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that. I think Normos or you Normos. know, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I mean, I can stand corrected. My jeez, I. I mm. <laughs> Serious A and Serious B. Mm -hmm. Remember when we started the show about Ubikayu? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they come from the, 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 the binary star system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that the reticuli? Yeah. Binary means two stars. Yes. If memory serves me correctly and I can stand fucking corrected, mm. <laughs> Serious A and Serious B are the stars. Yes. Correct. In that solar system. In the solar system, correct. So the question is, how do they know about their star system? Exactly. Series yeah. B. And yeah. it's a dwarf star for series A. I mean, it's impossible because it's so small. You can't see your naked eye. You know? yeah, Maybe yeah. you can just see a dot. Yeah. I mean, some people like to say, yeah, because old men, uh, ancient men, what they do is they lie down uh, and, they, and look they look at the sky, the sky at night. They got nothing else no, to no do. TV, uh, bro. No, no TV, bro. No TV, no YouTube. Uh, so they just mm. make babies and look at the sky. That's yeah. all, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Which is correct because at the time there was no light pollution. Yeah, 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 they can yeah. see everything, right? Yeah. So, but how do they know? How did he know? So, so this is the legend. They right. tell this anthropologist, that's right. how he knows. And then he wrote it down and then uh, it was discovered in the 1950s. Right. So he wrote this down in 1930s. Oh the my. information didn't reach until 1950s when he discovered it. Oh, wow. Yeah, so there's a period of about 20 years. Wow. So they knew this beforehand. Wow. Uh, hundreds of years before then, they knew this information. So this is very interesting for me because it is something uh, that is, um, pro not say proven, but something that is collectively there. Yeah. You can actually do your science and check, yeah. right? Humankind has got short-term memory loss. Uh, short-term memory loss, right? So basically, um, they were saying beings coming from from above. Many cultures, even in, uh, let's say, America, mm. right? The the Indians, mm. right? So, uh, no, no, not, not Singapore. Native uh, yeah, American Native Indians. Native American Indians, I like yeah. to put it. So <laughs> Native American Indians, they have their own legends right. of uh, people coming down from above. Right. And then uh, they were the ancestors. Yeah. They come from the stars. Yeah. So these are all word of mouth. They don't have written records, but right. uh, through word of mouth, through their song, through their religion, yeah. and they get these things out. Yeah. Right? So they and bring- after smoking a lot of weed. Yeah. Uh, after smoking a lot of weed, you know. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Yeah. I'm only kidding. Don't out me for this shit. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's the, uh, the, the thing about civilizations. They right. talk about this, they come from the stars. Right. Because they all got to have some kind of creation theory. Right. Where do I come from? I wasn't kidding about the weed part, yeah. you know. Yes, correct. I I really wasn't. Yes, I you know. Think about it. I mean, you know, because because the Incas, they were using weed as part of their yeah, correct medicinal medicinal uh, purposes. Therapy. Yeah, yeah, therapy. yeah, right. Yeah. So for them, uh, you know, I mean, not advocating weed too. Okay, yeah, correct. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so it's basically that you know you mm -hmm. you you have this kind of civilizations mm -hmm. that uh, the, some historians go and or uh, anthropologists when yeah. they stay with them, then you get all this information out. Right. And that's how you actually it becomes even more in interesting. Because now it's not so much as something built on Earth and then you try to have an argument about who built this and what. Right. But now it's knowledge of a star system right. that no one would ever have dreamed of. Yeah, exactly. And you're, you're so accurate about it. Your yeah. whole uh, culture. Tells, it's not by fluke also. So can, if we sum this up, man, the Egyptians, were they knew about Orion's belt. Mm. I'm pretty sure they knew yeah, more than that. Right, yeah. uh, then you've got Gobekli Tepe that were looking up into the sky. They yeah. could actually, you know, carve into stone. Yeah the solar system at the time, mm -hmm. right? And and depicted what happened. Um, and then um, now we talk about these these uh, people, what they call again? Dogon the, tribe. The Dogon tribe. Yeah. That actually knew about Sirius A and B yeah. from way back when, from 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 their ancestors. Yeah, their ancestors. Passed yes, downwards. Passed right? down, yes, that's right. Yeah. 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 So these are what they call the, uh, like, what, that's a good summary of uh, the things that we've been saying so far. Mm -hmm. So these are basically, not here's uh gives a bit of weight you yeah. know into this thing yeah now one more basically which i want to bring up is just this map system mm. um there's this guy called professor hapgood okay h-a-p-g-o-o-d uh he found a strange map that was written somewhere i think i can't remember i think 1500 by this guy called uh, it's called a perry reese map p-e-r-i-r-e-i-s Okay, now what's so special about this map? Peri Peri sauce. Uh, peri Peri sauce. <laughs> okay. So he drew it very accurately. Mm -hmm. And he drew Antarctica without the ice caps. That means there's no ice on Antarctica. And when they went to do a research, they found it's accurate without the ice. But if without the ice means the map is this this is a void, is sea, isn't it? it? It's the void sea. That means this was before ice even landed on Antarctica. 
Landed. Ya, ada. Okay. <laughs> landed lah. That's the word lah. Uh, 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 topic of landed, landed. Okay. Ice landed. Uh, ice landed. So, that means he drew a map uh-huh. uh, that was so accurate that had the sea line of uh, this Antarctica. Right. You're talking about the 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 what goes around the shore yeah the shoreline the Antarctica the shoreline, shoreline. Yeah, okay. very okay. accurate so mm. they, they, they they were wondering what happened so he made a note in a map they went further research into this person's uh, drawing on a map he said he found it from older sources okay so his map was developed from reference to older sources but he never put from where okay yeah so this is one of the biggest uh, issues now I mean not now but has been, always been that means uh, how could he include a map of Antarctica without ice because ice as you know uh, came about a million years ago right. some kind of survey must have been done on top right. and then they draw it out right right because it's that accurate right so this is uh but was there ice without the ice without, without the ice so what was there man so i mean it's it was just, just an outline it's just outline but he drew the outline very accurate right. and, 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 the, and his map says it's just ocean oh uh, no his map is just the outline of antarctica he says antarctica yeah but it, but there's no land mass there's land mass Land mass, but not ice. Not ice. So you're so saying that, that it is actual land, land, as in terra firma, as in yeah, terra firma. grass and yeah. soil. Yeah, and terra firma. So without the ice. So the, the question is, how does he, how did he know how to draw that out? Because people who do this thing called cartographers, they yeah, were cartographers, actually, cartographers, they will go around oceans and then they will just get the, the can be quite but accurate. The, but no one is, at that time, did anyone, ha, has Antarctica been discovered? No, yet? no, I don't think so. No, yeah. right? So, so it's a long, long time ago. So 1500 plus. So this map came about. Okay. So that was the, also another questions that people ask. Uh, uh, people like uh, Eric Von Daniken. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. So these are some of the famous people that brought the topic up into yeah. the world mainstream. Yeah. Yeah. I first read Eric Von Daniken's book uh, back in 1977. Okay. Yes, I'm still young, but I was a very young boy when I read. Yeah. So uh, I love to read. So one of the books I touched at that time from a secondhand bookstore, wow, what is this? Chariots of Chariots the Gods. Of the gods yeah. oh, it must yeah. be a Christian book. <laughs> <laughs> well, it opened up, you know, talking about all this, you know, so yeah, it was very yeah. interesting. I have me. a copy uh, of that. I have a copy, yeah. right? Yeah, I have the 50th anniversary. That's See. how old it is, you know, the book. Yeah. But it is basically uh, written by, a, he's basically a hoteller. Uh, Eric Von Daniken is a hoteller right. with interest in this. So he right. traveled around the world and he wrote. So he started this movement, right. uh, Ancient Aliens. And then as you know, History Channel produced about 24 seasons. Yeah, so, they had him on the show too, right? So popular yeah. until today, right? They're yeah. still making making uh, seasons after seasons. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, therefore we are now talking about this. Lah, except right? not, not that popular Singaporeans, I would think. Yeah. No, I don't think they know anything. Yeah, exactly. Uh, except yeah. the Toto, right? The, yeah, Toto. Uh, five five million dollars. Yeah. Uh, the, how, how much is the? Yeah. Do any of it. Suddenly <laughs> YouTube don't let me publish the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. La, okay, la. <laughs> okay la. I just want to play. Maybe I can win. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, okay. so this is uh, one of those, la, like I mentioned, uh, Okay. Race map. So um actually they are So made, Eric von Daniken, you were going on about chariot of the gods. Uh, chariot of the gods, yeah. So, yeah. so he was the basically the person that started this into the main uh, mainstream of public. It's very easy to read. The book is very thin. Right. And uh, basically it's digestible. So mm-hmm. he started this movement. Again. People started to ask questions. So uh, the ancient astronaut theory. Yeah. Uh, actually came from him. Yes. He, he started the whole damn uh, thing. Actually, not him. He took the influence from someone else right. in the past, but he would sort of put it together and popularize. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of historians don't like him yeah. because they say the word said he had bastardized. He bastardized history. history. Yeah. He bastardized history. And yeah. uh, basically, he did it for his own uh, purpose uh, to earn money. Yeah. Right? So, but as we go along and deeper and the questions were asked more and more, they had a following now. Yeah. Even uh, mainstream historians are asking, right. uh, do we actually have it correct? Or yeah. should we be pushing back the timeline right. of civilization? Right. Right. But then again, that is a different scope altogether. Yeah. Because uh those who are academics will never want to change their stance. No, because there's a lot of work, uh, they're uh, lazy. Uh. <laughs> right. So they are famous for that. So if you want to be a very good archaeologist or historian in my university, make sure you toe the line. Yeah. If you don't toe the line, you'll never get a professor. You won't get your PhD. The PhD. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that is what is happening. Yeah. Well, sadly, la, you know. Yeah, I mean, sadly. but I just think that it's so weird that human race fast forwarded so quickly. Yes. And then all of a sudden, you know, out of the blue from hunter gatherers, boom, we have civilization. Yeah. Boom, we have this engineering. Correct. You know, we could build structures that are so amazing. Yeah. I just think it's 
Really? It is I mean, too fast. Yeah, I mean, that alone doesn't, is not that logical, isn't it? It yes. would take thousands of years. Yes, yes, correct. For us to get to that level. Yes. I mean, we're not that smart. Yeah. You know, then all of a sudden we see, a, 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 we see the, the, the human race speed up so quickly. Yeah. You know, uh, and then it slowed down a little bit. Then we went to the bronze, copper age, bronze age, yeah. iron age, you know, yeah. and, Dark and then, age. <laughs> oh, the blue in the 20th century. Yeah. After World War II. Boom! Yeah. Fast forward again. Correct. Yeah. We and now we're talking about AI. Now we're talking about more on AI. Yeah. It's really, really fast. It's you know. Really fast. Yeah. It is not in the history of mankind to de develop so fast. Yeah. I mean, so we live in an era now that is so fast that uh, we actually are not evolved to handle so much. Yeah. yeah. Because after the industrial Re revolution, right, mm. it started to to take a, a more steady pace. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, things started to pick up a little bit more when the wars came about. Because, mm -hmm. you know, wars, wars, hate to say it, but wars actually uh, uh, do stimulate a lot of new inventions and innovations, yeah. right? Correct. Because we, everyone, everyone wants to make money from it. Yeah. And everybody want, needs to build something new yeah. for, for, for the war machine, yeah. right? Uh, then after that, th you know, things were okay, we're still a steady pace. And then suddenly, after World War II, then came June 1947. Yes, the Roswell crash. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, technology just took Correct. a leap. Yeah, as uh, one of the um, persons who, I mean, he's not, not around anymore, Colonel Philip Corso. Uh, yeah. he, he wrote a book and um, he's a colonel. So I think most probably I can believe what he wrote. He wrote a lot about um, inventions of today mm -hmm. being taken from uh, this kind of crash retrieval sources. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them was basically the transistor, even up to Velcro, up yeah. to Kevlar yeah. uh, for helmets and all that. So these are all the technologies that they actually have actually gotten. David Adair, we yeah. talked about him earlier. Yeah, right? David Adair, yes. You know, David Adair, when he was 17 years old, mm. you know the story? Um, he built mm. a rocket mm. at 17. He was a damn genius. As a mm -hmm. matter of fact, Stephen Hawkins, worked with him uh, as university mates mm -hmm. when they were both pursuing a PhD. I see. And this guy is very smart. Mm -hmm. At 17, he built a rocket, mm -hmm. not just any old rocket. Mm -hmm. He built with his own bare hands, whatever he could get from his dad's workshop. I see. Okay. An electromagnetic propulsion engine. And that rocket, when he said, um, they actually, they needed a place, a safe place to launch it. Mm -hmm. So they approached the Air Force mm -hmm. and the Air Force gave them, I can't remember which app is one of those that's always involved in this thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, I can't remember which missile base it was and um, or Air Force base. And then um, the rocket, when it took off in front of everyone, it was so blinding when it took off so quick, so fast that no one could even see that he took off, mm -hmm. right? Now he can state actually in his older years that he could build a rocket mm -hmm. that can go around the world mm -hmm. six times mm -hmm. in maybe half an hour. I see. Wow, that's fast, boy. Okay. <laughs> uh, and it's not the speed of light, mm -hmm. that's for sure, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so this guy's a bright guy. Then after that, they whisked him away mm -hmm. to help them with their thing. Mm -hmm. Um, not in, uh, well, in Area 51. Mm -hmm. And that's when he was introduced to this thing that had a smooth skin and um, it's metallic, but it had a smooth mirror shine skin mm -hmm. and, uh, and there was a hole in it. Okay. And he, they asked him to take a look at it because they don't know how to trigger this thing mm -hmm. to switch itself on. Mm -hmm. So he looked into it and he looked at the mechanisms inside and he said that shit looks like what I built. Mm. Just that it's crazy because there's no wirings. Mm. He said plenty of wirings, mm. just didn't have any. Mm. When he put his hand on it, the skin of that metallic object actually reacted. Mm -hmm. Okay. It pulsed out waves along the skin, mm -hmm. right? And then um, he realized that, hang on, this thing is, what's the word for it, man? Where you have- ESP. No, the biological, no, it is, it interfaces- mm, With the brain. Biologically, Bi mm. right? Uh, bi biologically to someone. Yeah. Okay, what's the word for it? 
there's a term for it. Shit. <laughs> um, and it, 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 it's, this thing is kind of like part biological. Correct. That's why how, how they have uh, this information has come out. Mm. That's how they fly this craft. The craft is flew, is flown, sorry, English very bad. It's flown <laughs> by contact with the hand yep. onto the surface. Right. So it's like an organism. It fits into this pilot and yep. it flies about. Yeah. So, yeah. so with that, right? Mm -hmm. He refused to help them, mm. you know, and they forced him, otherwise they threatened him with all kinds of stuff. And he was only 17 years old. Mm -hmm. And he says that, okay, can I at least have my rocket back? Mm -hmm. So they said, okay, get your rocket back. He, they brought him over to the place where his rocket, you know, actually landed. Mm -hmm. And he deliberately went in there. He took some grease he, he, without him knowing. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but it's this grease that he says, he, when he puts it into his mechanism, the whole damn thing will blow. Mm -hmm. And it did. I see. Right? And they didn't have his tech at least, uh -huh. right? And then they eventually they screwed him over. They forced him to enlist in, into the Navy. I see, wow. Okay, and he was in the Navy for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now, this kid at the time, kid, David Adair, um, said that, look, if you have, a, 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 if you take a look at what's happened since then, the Apache helicopter, when, you, when we all know that, mm -hmm. the pilot puts the helmet on, right? And he turns his head, the gun moves with his sight and his head, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They must have found a way. Correct. Because right now they reverse engineered at least something like this. Yes, correct, yeah. Right? Mm. So, so that's the story. I find it very, very fascinating. It's just that I'm so frustrated myself because there is a particular term for it. Yes. When uh, you have your biology connected to a, to a machine. Yeah, so please watch the subtitles. It'll be placed there. <laughs> <laughs> really, man. Yeah. I, I really just so pissed at myself. Can't remember the term. Yeah. Well, anyway, I think that's about, let's call it a day where ancient aliens concerned. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, um, and let's move on to the exciting stuff that's been happening in the last month plus or so. Yeah. Let's talk about Miami. Yes. Miami Sound Machine. Oh, boy. <laughs> and it wasn't Gloria Estefan. Yeah. Um, Miami Mall. I think it's called Bayside. Yeah, Bayside. Bayside Marketplace. Yes. Now, just to give you guys some background, some context, um, when the year turned, there was this big hoo-ha in Miami Beach at in this mall called Bayside Marketplace. Now, people was people came on online and started giving testimony. There was chaos in that mall. Everyone is running out of the mall. Um, and, peop and a lot of people, witnesses, came on separately to say that something happened in that mall. A portal opened and tall, very tall, eight to 10 feet tall, strange looking creatures came out of that portal and they seemed to be phasing in and out. And these people panicked and they ran. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, there are a lot of videos about this, about 80 to 100 police cars came around and cordoned off the entire mall. Now, let's take a look at that scene. Uh, Kai, there's a video for, for the cop cars in Miami. Not this one. Which uh, video? The Miami cops, that one. Esta es una llamada a todas las unidades de la ciudad de Miami. Esto es en Bayside ahora. Cinco de la noche de hoy, primero de enero, frente a Bayside. Sources being used yeah. for, for, for thing. Then, um, of course, the, the official story was that there were 50 teenagers in the mall yeah. fighting with sticks and shooting fireworks at each other like gang fights. So all these cop cars have come. 
but in Miami as we know if you play GTA 5 and GTA 6 the upcoming one this is Miami you know it's normal it's dealing with drugs and all that yeah, you bring you, in a squad car of 60 yeah. to stop a fight you, I think that's in, in, in you're America. cops with guns yeah. and this is America it's not yes. Singapore yeah, right? yeah. You, if you have 50 kids fighting yeah. if that's really the case teenagers yeah. at the most you send 10 cars yeah correct to right? pick it up yeah. yeah to pick it up mm. I mean any Hollywood movie that we watch yeah. even if it's a bank heist Yes. You probably have 20 cars out there. Not like this. Yes. And in America, when you have uh, fights like this happening over teenagers, uh, what happens is that there'll be a lot of people shooting videos on their handphones yeah. and sending it to what they call the uh, news channel. Yeah. And they will broadcast it for a fee. That mm-hmm. means they pay for your videos and then they will talk about this is a newsworthy story. There's yeah. a gang fight happening yeah. in the mall. But for this case, there was not a single video produced. Yeah. There's not a single video shot. And what they saw only was people running out of the mall. Correct. Right? And yeah. they panicked. Correct. So this was where actually uh, it stopped there. And then came about uh, one person who, who said, we saw something yep. and that was how it started, the whole ball game. Yep. We saw these creatures appearing. Yep. And then uh, of course people were laughing and all that. But yep. as it went on, it, it grew a lot of heavy traction because a lot of people started to also admit that what they saw was um, something out of this world. But you know, mm. the sucky part, when the, after that, right, it went viral. The mm-hmm. cops came out yeah. and the cops said, no, we've arrested four kids, four teenagers for setting off fireworks, mm-hmm. right? It's nothing to do with aliens. And they were really, really insulting, making fun of the people who came out and said that there were. Yes. And the next day, one of them, one of these people that said that they, that they saw aliens there, mm-hmm. uh, actually came out and said that it was a joke. He didn't mean it. I'm sorry for this shit. Mm. Right? Yeah. But then, you know, the internet's a powerful tool. Yeah. You have a lot of people like me. Uh. Well, of course, <laughs> I'm not living in America. If I will, I'd take a freaking flight down to Miami and check it out myself. Yeah. They actually went there and the same guy who said, yeah, there were aliens who eventually retracted the story. Mm. And he said that he was never there. Part of his retraction was, I'm sorry, I wasn't even there. Mm. But when they looked at the video, mm. And they looked at the background. There was a Foot Locker. Mm-hmm. You know the shop, Foot yeah, Locker? Foot Locker. Mm. They went there and these guys took a picture of themselves with a Foot Locker in Bayside Marketplace. Yeah. So how can you say you were not there? Because there's a Foot Locker here mm. and it looks exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something's not right. Yes. To top it off, there's this other guy on TikTok whose dad is a cop mm-hmm. who he said was also vying to be a sheriff mm-hmm. soon. Yeah. And he called his dad to ask him about it. This is the footage I've got. Kai, the one about the cop, uh, the, the cop dad. My dad's a pol- my da- That's the one. Here we go. Dad's a police officer in Miami. And I mean, like he's even running for sheriff and I, I just talked to him. He didn't say anything about that. <laughs> Hey, do you, uh, have you been seeing the alien stuff? Did you see that in the, at the Bayside? Are you serious? You're, you're joking. You're joking. I'm not allowed to talk about it. Yeah. Now look, if it's four teenagers, why the fuck not? Correct. Because, um, when they were approached, the police were approached as well. They had a spokesman to give a report was as to what happened. There were no aliens, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we had a, f- we, we, we did not impose a no-fly zone, but actually there was a no-fly zone. Power supply was cut off. Yeah, to the that's mall. it. Yeah. That's the thing. Not just to the mall. Yeah. The not ho- just to the mall, the neighborhood. Neighborhood, huh? The, the neighborhood was blacked out, man. Yeah, blacked out. And they said they saw black helicopters flying yeah, around flying the mall. Around. Yeah. And all of a sudden, there was a power outage across the board. Correct. Do you know that until now, mm. the mall still hasn't reopened? Was it? It has not reopened. It's not even reopened. Ah. It's not been. And this guy, this guy just said, look, my dad is saying, I can't talk about it. I yeah. can't talk about it. And yeah. I don't understand why not. Yeah. Right? Now, this is where, this is where I need to do this first. Right? Because this one, I researched this for okay. us today. Right? <laughs> so I'm going to show you this one first. Do you know, now this is not separate from what I'm going to, what I'm going to allude to. Okay. okay? Kai, can you put up that one? Um, with uh, the, the the pyramid structure, please, with the with this with the ice. Yes. Now recently, 
this has been kind of found, discovered in Antarctica. Mm -hmm. Now we've been talking a lot about pyramids earlier on, right? Yes, correct. And we talked, and you brought up the map and Antarctica, right? Yeah. Freaking opportune. <laughs> if you, <laughs> if you took a, take a look at this, man, even sites at two kilometers per side, mm -hmm. right? Yes. This looks like a four-sided pyramid yes. somehow, mm -hmm. yeah? Now this spot has been discovered there. And then, you know, it was found in 2023, by the way, last year, mm -hmm. okay? Exactly the same dimensions as a great pyramid in Giza. Mm -hmm. Two mm -hmm. clicks by two clicks, mm -hmm. okay? Now this is where I'm gonna bring you to this. Can we have the coordinates up please, Kai? The white colored, no, not that one, no. The coordinates. Yes, please. Now, I'm bringing this up for a reason. You see the map coordinates at the bottom, right? That's where Bayside Marketplace mm -hmm. is. That is the map coordinate. Now with this, I'm going to show you what happens when we take these coordinates and we swap it. Swap it, huh? Mm -hmm. Just gonna swap it from uh, north to south and west to east. And this is what where you go to. Correct. Antarctica. It is the, the opposite of? Of? Of that mall. Of that mall yes. in Miami. Yeah, yeah, or Bayside correct. Marketplace. Yes. Right? Yeah. So you take this, you swap it, and I, I got this image myself. Mm -hmm. I went on Google Earth, mm -hmm. and I swapped north to south, mm -hmm. west to east, mm. and then, papam, Antarctica. Yeah. Right smack, right there. Correct. What's the implication? Okay, people were saying, right, mm. that a portal opened up in the mall mm -hmm. and these strange tall creatures walked out. Yeah, when it should be in Antarctica. That's the theory. I see, okay. That <laughs> they made a mistake mm. in keying in whichever fucking coordinates <laughs> and ended up. <laughs> okay, in the mall. In the mall. Yeah, man. Instead of on ice. They're the best place to meet human <laughs> beings. Yeah, hey, man, let's meet in the mall, Foot Locker, man. <laughs> I think they were surprises prepared the people were, man. I don't know. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm man. just saying, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. But isn't it too much of a freaking coincidence? Yeah, true. Right? Yeah. Now, every eyewitness say the same thing. Three 10 feet tall black creatures glitching in and out of a portal. Mm. Then you have this image. Or rather, I'm going to play you a video, mm -hmm. and I'd like to credit. Uh, what's her name again? Lenore. Lenore Clay. Lenore Clay. Thank you so much, Lenore Clay, for sharing this to the world. Uh, and also, it's from her show, "The Deepest Secret." Right? The darkest secret. Oh, the darkest secret. Now, I got this off from her. I'm going to give her credit for okay. this for sure. All yeah. Right. So let's take a look at this. Uh, I edited it. Mm -hmm. So that we can, you know, so for for time, for the sake of time on the show. Mm -hmm. So if you take a look at this, can we play that, please? Right here we go. Now watch this carefully. This is the C. Just pause it for a while, please, Kai. This is the CCTV footage. Mm -hmm. The security cameras mm -hmm. in the mall. In the mall, yeah. Which people are trying to get now. Mm -hmm. Some guy in some security guy probably. Mm -hmm was going through this footage of someone standing in the back mm -hmm. using his phone mm -hmm. and taping this down. Mm -hmm. un, well, secretly, yeah. I suppose. Okay. So it's a little hazy, a little blurry, a little, mm -hmm. you know, but if we, I think you'll get the picture as we go along. Can we play, please? Now, you see the right-hand side, huh? the far right-hand side, just watch the far right-hand side. There yeah. way his fingers pointing. Watch that. You saw that? Okay, keep it, keep it, keep it going. The right hand side, right to the far right. You saw that? Mm. We let the video continue playing, yeah? You see the you saw the flash? Mm, yeah. There was a flash, right? Did you see something? 
as clear as mud, right? It's 2024, but we are still recording Aliens on VHS. Don't worry, let me highlight what you should look at. The guys in the video point us towards some sort of disturbance in the image. It could well be from the camera or the high quality of the recording, but some spots are observed both here and here. Pay attention. You saw a pulse? Mm. You see that? On the internet they say that you can see a kind of shock wave. A mini shock wave. Can you see it? Is this not a person with their foot there and even an apparent arm? And then, as if out of nowhere, it simply disappears. If that is not a glitch in the camera, this clip could corroborate the versions that generated so much debate last Thursday on the channel. Yep. Yep. So do you see that one? Yeah. There was this thing that apparently, supposedly, allegedly, <laughs> I got to say all that shit, man. Yes, the beam came out and it came out of the portal. And yeah, yeah, it's like a the portal head. opening up yeah, and yeah. then it was like a shock wave, yeah, right? Correct. Um, and uh, everyone's been asking about where's the CCTV security correct, footage. Yeah. Uh, even the handphone footage, where's the handphone footage? Yeah, you know, you know yeah. and that's the thing. Maybe people are running away, people too scared, I don't mm, know. Yeah. But then again, to add more spice to this whole Miami mall <laughs> chaos, mm -hmm. 10 days after the what happened there, mm -hmm. this is what happened in Brazil. Which one? Brazil. Uh, it's not obvious. It isn't. The video, right? Yep. Yep, that's the one. Oh yeah, I, I, I think I... This one, you take a look. Yeah. At the top of the hill, you see two figures, right? Yeah. That's not small. There's an estimated to be about 10 feet tall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now, they walk down the hill mm. and people who, those are hikers. Yeah. They were saying to get up there is near, is, is so tough. Yeah. And these things were actually walking mm. down mm. eventually. I didn't have the footage there. Mm. And 10 feet tall. Yeah. From my first sight, when I see this, because of the topography, they are, it is very tall. Tall, very yeah, tall. It's, look it's look very at the topography, you're right. Yeah, because most people say, oh, no, no, that one just as uh, Mount Faber. Yeah. One man standing there. <laughs> no, it's crap because it's quite far, the camera, right? And it's reported yeah. everywhere on CNN, on uh, the independent, as you saw. Yeah. Right? And, uh, and you know, frankly, man, I mean. <laughs> yeah, a lot of things have developed in this field of late. Yeah. Uh, this period uh, of time, yeah. uh, we are in a very exciting age of uh, uf ufology because there's just so many things that's happening. Even Jeremy Corbell's, uh, what do you call oh, it? Oh, yeah, the jellyfish, uh, object the jellyfish found, object, object yeah. found over <laughs> the, the, the Iraqi base. Where the US uh, correct, uh, yeah. yeah, and mm -hmm. it, it can only watch, see them on infrared, in, uh, thermal. thermal, thermal, thermal. That's yes, it, and sure. they really look weird, right? Yeah, but guess look. what they look like? Mm. I was watching this yesterday, yeah, and I recognize it. Hollywood, huh? yeah. again, huh? the recent Aquaman movie. <laughs> oh, I, I don't see Aquaman. Go watch it, yeah. I only see Aqua. Go watch it. <laughs> 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 Yeah, those are aliens too. Changi point go aqua. Aqua mean. Okay. <laughs> 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 
Okay, okay. For those, the next episode we'll be talking about ancient aquas. Uh, yeah, okay, all right. those listeners who are screwed for this. Who are not from Singapore? Uh, is uh, okay, is don't, Singaporean don't, 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 don't explain. Don't, don't explain it. Don't, 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 don't explain it, please. Oh, uh, damn! I'm gonna get uh, fucked yeah. over for this. Oh okay, man, okay, bong. Okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. When I watched that movie, right, yeah. Aquaman: The Lost Kingdom, yeah, and you know the um the villain. On mm. the movie, he he of course he got he got contraptions, and see, big see. ancient submarine, mm. same thing, oh. an ancient alien thing oh. or something like that, mm. you know, or mystical stuff. Yeah. But he built this human built submarine that looks like an octopus with tentacles coming out of the back, mm. and when and then when they hoist it up and moves this way, he looks exactly really like Jeremy Corbell's. Uh, uh, um, um, jellyfish, yeah. you were full. Yeah, you know. And I said, hey, "Hang on a second, <laughs> like, how does this happen?" And we know that that this movie was filmed before. Yeah, correct. Before this UFO, uh, jellyfish uh, UFO came out. Yeah, you know, uh, where we on Jeremy Corbell's show. Yeah. So, I I felt an eerie similarity between the two. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really weird, man. Yeah, War of the Worlds. You, uh, all those yeah. machines coming up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So exactly, yeah. how they come up with that? HG Wells, right? Yeah, HG Wells. Um, and then you have Tom Cruise's uh, uh, version of Water Worlds. Yeah. And they all look like that. Correct. So this thing is something uh, sinister. I think yeah. it is now acknowledged by a lot of people, especially in the US government. Yeah. The US government knows more than us, but I think to the American public, there's something very sinister about this. You go over a base, you may be carrying a payload or whatever, you mm. know, bomb, bombs or whatever, mm. or alien bombs or whatever, mm. but you cannot be tracked with the eye mm. or infrared cameras yeah, going yeah, through yeah. thermal. Yeah. So that means you can penetrate to any airspace, yeah. any place just to observe. Like a cloaking device. It's man. a cloaking device. Yeah. So why why is there this need for a cloaking device? So yeah. uh, there are some people who are very scared about this because- uh, Wait, so you, What are you saying here, man? You think <laughs> that you think that it's reverse engineered, that it's not alien? It's, it, it, I think this, this is another, uh, uh, okay, this uh, a fringe topic. Okay, sure. Okay. We all, we, we've been on the fringe, man. Come on. We've been on the fringe ever okay. since we started this kind of series. Yeah, we, you know, we always try to science, science, sound scientific. No, no, right? no, no. But this I fringe, think I've gone a bit overboard. Uh, really, so, yeah. so the fringe thing is that uh, mm. they are coming. These people are coming. Yeah. Right? They're coming. Yeah. Uh, some of them are good, some are bad, but the bad ones are coming in to really in, do a, 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 a an invasion. A so-called invasion of the earth. The bad thing, the bad ones, they're talking about the the, the, malevol the malevolent ones. Yes. Sadly, oh, I noticed this over the last month because I follow these things too, right? Mm. There's been a lot more talk about the bad ones. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, right now, I think it's just changing narratives mm. because we discussed this before, yeah. Louis Elizondo. Yeah. Um, and, and Nick Pope, yeah. they like to talk about, we must be ready for this, you yeah. know, and they try to paint a, a, a quite a dirty picture about, yeah. about E.T. Yeah. And then they realize uh, that, of course, you have people like Stephen, uh, Greer. Stephen Greer, who says they are not like that. Mm. And then now you have this narrative becoming, there are good ones, but there are also the bad ones. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't know, you know, whether yeah. or not, uh, yeah. whether or not, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just these people trying to change the narrative and to, to still try to win something over to believe that they're malevolent. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then they come up with a, you know, a lot more reptilian stories. Now Correct. Too. Right. Yeah. I saw, I was watching a podcast mm. um, last week mm -hmm. and there was this guy, um, you know, he know this paranormal shit, right? Mm -hmm. Where they have that EV, uh, electro voice uh, 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 thing yeah. that you can know, hear ghosts yeah. talking to you shit and all, right? <laughs> And they say, who knows? It might work with aliens. We don't know if they're from another dimension, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Uh -huh. And freaky, dude, mm. because why? Around them, they went into the mall. Uh -huh. These people have been breaking into the mall <laughs> illegally mm. because it's caught not by, it's caught, they're not supposed to be there, right? Yeah. They've gone in there and they've got, there's a lot of voices coming in yeah. saying that, uh, telling them to either leave, B, yes, aliens, C, one appearing now, Mm. Uh, the portal mm. um, and a lot of sort of vindicating what eyewitnesses were saying, you mm -hmm. know, and this thing that's talking to them apparently mm. is one of those aliens, mm. right? Uh, that it's interdimensionally can't see them. Yeah. Uh, I gotta admit though, uh, I mean, of course it can be planned, but I don't think it was. Mm -hmm. 
and there've been strange sounds around it. It's more like a ghost hunting thing than <laughs> I don't know, man. I just couldn't figure it out, but yeah. it was entertaining, yeah, you know. Okay. So uh, um, there was that, right? So this is uh, oh, and 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 that um, and there's one thing this thing said on the EV. Um, it said it's not a good thing for the wolf. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's not good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't know what this thing was. You know, I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, what the hell? Correct. You know, but it's just entertaining. It was entertaining to me. Yeah, like entertaining. Yeah. It's called uh, entertainment. Like my very first episode that I mentioned, yeah. a long time ago, it's just for entertainment. Yeah, it's just for entertainment. Science fiction, you know. But sometimes, I mean, it's good to know about these things. Yeah. And then if you like to hire the both of us to be consultants, uh, we will gladly charge oh, a no. very high fee and you'll be- oh, boy. <laughs> On your talk show. Okay, just to end <laughs> off, man, Bong. Yeah, you know, okay. uh, it's All always right. good to have you back, bro. Thank you, sir. I just want to show you this, man. This is something that I hope will blow your mind. Okay, because, man. please. Because remember uh, season one. No, no, was it season one or season two? Season two, season two, I think. Mm -hmm. And I showed you NDP. Ah, uh, yes, correct. Remember that one? Yeah, the flyover, something now, flew over. My informant, mm. let's call him Mr. Deep Throat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Deep Throat. Fuck me, he's, yeah, gonna, he's not going to be so happy if we call him that. Okay. Deep Throat <laughs> alerted me to something on Reddit. Oh. Singapore. Mm. Yeah. Uh, before I show you the footage, it's not footage, eh? it's just a still picture. Let me explain to you why it's a still picture. I must apologize. And I should have listened to Deep Throat okay. because he didn't warn me. Uh. The, when I went back, because there was a video mm. and I wanted to, of course, get that footage, right? Mm -hmm. It's been archived, man. Archived by it's who? No long, I have no fucking clue. Uh -huh. It's no longer available. I see. And, so, and he did tell me, Deep Throat, you better get that before it's taken off. Mm. Wow. <laughs> it was taken off. Fucking hell. Really? Yeah. And what I managed to get was this shot. Get ready for this. Remember I told, told you, yeah. season two, we talked about one NDP. Yeah. The actual NDP parade, right? Yes, correct. Check out this picture. This is NDP 2023 rehearsal. Yes. Last year. Okay. Not the same one as the last one. Mm -hmm. Again, NDP. Yeah. But rehearsal. Somebody on Reddit was taking pictures, taking pictures, then noticed this black spot. You see that black dot there? Yeah. I can see a black dot. Yeah. And it's, it's not a drone. Yeah. Yeah, no way. Don't because the high. video, mm. which I'm regret regrettably is not here. Right now I can't show you. Mm -hmm. That thing went boom. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that kind of movement. Yeah. Yeah. It mm. just went shot off like a rocket. Mm. And that was it. Mm. Yeah. So again, at our NDP, but this was the rehearsal. Mm. Okay. Well, uh, I'm not saying that it really, you know, hang on. No, disclaimer, you, disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. Yeah. I'm not saying that our own defense forces don't know things like that happen or whether these things, this thing was really there or whether it was, I'm not saying anything of the sort. I'm just saying that, look, this was out of Reddit. read it. Yeah. Somebody put it up there yeah. and it really doesn't look very normal. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. 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 And it's interesting to just, hey, guess what, man? Check it out. Yeah. You know? And also this is the awareness of the country which we are in. Yeah. They don't bother about these things. They don't know this hate is what, you know? <laughs> Like I say, we are the minorities who talk about such yeah, things, yeah. you know, because they don't understand what's yeah, We are on the fringe, bro. They will say, oh, that's a fly on a windscreen. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It could be a fly. Yeah, you're right. It's a fly on ah, a camera lens. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, no time. <laughs> la. And then this is another thing. This is the last thing I want to show before we close shop. Here, okay, okay, okay. okay. Um, Singapore, in Singapore. Now, yeah. I am of the opinion that should, again, disclaimer, UAPs or UFOs really come around this country of ours mm -hmm. that they like to this particular hotspot. Oh, really? Hotspot? Okay, hang uh, on. Uh. Uh. I'm going to bring up this thing that was in 2009. I found this. Can you put it up, please, Kai? Uh, and, and this statement says, um, in essence, okay, did anybody spot anything in, did it say Sengkang, Kai? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, in Sengkang. Now, remember, I had my guest Yes. Douglas Anderson. Mm -hmm. And Doug was talking about his experience. And then he took a video, a great video, the Zippo with the, yeah. with the blow up that looks like a Zippo lighter. Yeah. That 
craft that he took a video of, mm-hmm. he lives in Sengkang. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. This one, 2009, did anybody see this thing in Sengkang? Yeah, hang on, hang on. And then, Haogang in Sengkang, nearby, right? Yeah. Very nearby, right? Yeah. In a park near in Haogang, a friend of mine, in the middle of the day, took this video. This is in Aukang. Yep. Oh. And blow by blow, as she was doing that, she was like, guess what, I'm gonna get this thing right now. Okay. Is there a original uh, video of that, Kai? Uh, that's the full video. That's the full video, okay. Okay. Uh, can we do the, uh, so I, of course on my own, I tried blowing it up and this is how it looks like. I don't know whether I'm right or wrong, but <laughs> what I did was I got rid of the filters and stuff, right? Mm. And this is what I got, like, you know, there are square grids on it and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But this thing was fl- was flashing mm-hmm. and it was in Haogang. Mm. Um, I can, well, I I looked at the original one, right? And believe me, it, it was just like what Douglas took in the daytime on that episode, and mm-hmm. I flashed that one on screen, mm-hmm. it looked like that one. Mm. The moment she said, showed me this, I said, shit, it's almost identical to the other one that, yeah, that Douglas yeah. showed, yeah, yeah. right? So I'm beginning to think, man, that that part of Singapore, so many things happening, you know, as far as I can see it. You remember that one with that, that girl that took the shot, yeah. the video at night, correct? and she was so funny, yeah. right? On the last episode that yes. we won for Euphorus. Yeah. How come? The Aukang, there's an area uh, for many years. It has it's a very has a very spiritual vibe. Yeah, no, now you're talking spirits, man. No, no, no. It, <laughs> it, 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 a, lot, a lot of people have said this. Uh, mm. it's, it's a very spiritual vibe about the area. Haokang, Singkang. Mm. So uh, through history, long time ago when people settled in Singapore, uh, they, uh, especially the Chinese immigrants, they used to stay in the area. Right. So there is a certain vibe and, uh, a supernatural paranormal yeah, vibe. some kind of vibe like, you know? so this is what our own skinwalker area yeah, skin, huh? it's our own <laughs> own uh, zone for skinwalkers they've seen a lot of things a lot of uh, uh, even some some religious things they have seen so which means that they, they could be they, maybe maybe just maybe some of these people mistook um, ET for something supernatural maybe uh, it could be yeah, yeah you know so so there are many many uh, through the years which are, uh, came to me some people have has told me stories about it in the sky. They see things, uh, even in churches. You Hong know, Kong. Like, uh, Hong Kong, yeah. So uh, you have things that people see and then yeah. they, they tell me, hey, really no bong, I saw this. No, I really saw that. I saw that. So I say, good lah. So maybe one day I sit there. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we find a kopitiam. I put a mat on the floor. I lie down <laughs> and watch the sky. We find a kopitiam sky. somewhere yeah. in Hong Kong. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah. we just sit there for about three weeks. You know, yeah. then we look up with the fucking sky yeah. and see what they see. Then and some people also say, when I go Hong Kong and Sing Kang, that area, I got this uh-huh. energy vibe uh-huh. that fills me up. <laughs> say, oh, that's very good. Yeah. It's called South <laughs> I, Yeah, I better go to the shop by 40, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but I, I'm beginning to see this. There's, like, there's a strange pattern going on here. Yeah. Sengkang, 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 Haogang, Haogang, Sengkang, Sengkang. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. What the hell? Yeah. It's all happening there. Why? Yeah, correct, correct. Right? Yeah. Could, I mean, there must be something. Is, is it in, in, on this island, maybe that part of Singapore? It has got more magnetism. I don't know. Yeah. So for viewers who are watching this, if you happen to stay in Sengkang, Aokang, you know what to do. Just whip it out and start shooting. Whip it out. Whip out your cameras <laughs> and start shooting. Basically, as what we always say, look the fuck up. Yeah. Look to the sky. Yeah. Ah. Look up, man. I mean, it's, it's been quite crazy. This is why I, I was trying to see whether or not, is it me? Is it me? Am I going nuts or what? Yeah. But um, then I found this Thing this guy in 2009 also in Sengkang. Mm. I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, that's it's right. just way too much of a coincidence. Way too much of a coincidence. Man. Yeah, way yeah, too yeah, much, correct, man. Correct, yeah. Well, anyway, you know, this season, uh, just to share with you before I say goodbye. Yes, sir. Um, <sighs> for Euphoras, UFO Reveal Asia, I've only got two episodes of the season. Oh, okay. Why? Because a lot of people are just shutting the fuck up. Uh. <laughs> I put out uh, I put out an appeal. Hey, come on, guys. Come on. I mean, have you seen anything? You know, just come on around. No answer, nothing, yeah. you know. 
My goodness gracious me. Yeah. But I'm not going to stop this, you yeah. know, even if it's going to be one episode for this particular series on my show, yeah. then so be it. I'll yeah. just have Bong coming back. Yeah, thank you, we, sir. Yes. Hey, we keep talking about yeah, this, okay? Talking, yeah. Because I really think that it's so sad, man. Do you have any more material that you want to share? Uh, no, the, um, I can bring on to them for the next period if you have a next show. I will uh, have, yeah. You have, huh? So I guess maybe this is sort of like a public service that we like to do to the people here yeah. <laughs> to bring you awareness of this conehead person <laughs> that uh, these things do exist. Uh, I don't think that it is crazy. Ebens, um, yeah, Ebens, huh? yeah. right? uh, it, it is a topic that I think well, you should be well aware of. You should be well made yeah, aware of. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, as I said the government before, you know, the last, the, uh, on, uh, you know, the episode for this one. I see. And, um, and I showed him a video um, and in one shot taken by the James Webb telescope, mm -hmm. um, and it was marvelous because it's a whole big, just one tiny spot in space. It's mm -hmm. supposed to be dark space. Mm -hmm. Turned out to be, it wasn't dark at all. Mm. So you got a whole ton of galaxies, man. It's yeah. easily 10 billion yeah, galaxies correct. and one small little pixel. Yes. Um, and you know where galaxies are concerned? There are probably millions and millions and millions of, yeah. of solar systems with yeah. a sun. Correct. And when a star, mm -hmm. and when a star, of course, it's a sun of, the, of its own yeah. system there, which means they have to be at least minimum one planet. Mm. So, you know, how can we say yeah. that it's not an important subject to talk about whether or not we are alone. You know, like the Fermi paradox, mm -hmm. I say bollocks to you. Yeah, like, correct. You know, I mean, Fermi, I mean, I think he was one of the guys that plucked Oppenheimer if you watch the movie. Yeah. Um, Fermi was, paradox is about, um, it maybe it's because the theory is for where he's concerned as a renowned scientist mm -hmm. is that civilizations out there in the universe could be so old, mm -hmm. have exist, existed much earlier than us. Mm -hmm that uh, they all died off and we're the only ones left behind. No, la. I don't believe. Yeah. If you're the, 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 a person who actually has time, I think just think through how much, uh, how much space there is above Earth. Precisely. How much planets and, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, we're really, we are, we are definitely not alone. Exactly. And then uh, scientists have concurred that the, the, the universe is constantly expanding. Yeah, correct. The one little dark space, the spot that we seemingly yeah. dark, mm -hmm. Then James Webb came along and we realized that it's not dark at all. Mm. And in that one small little square, we see 10 billion galaxies. Yeah. They're not fucking stars, man. They're billion. galaxies, yeah, billion right? Galaxies, man. 10 billion. billion. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and how many galaxies do we really have? Yeah, a lot. Trillions, Trillions. right? So it's unimaginable. Our brain cannot adjust to that fact. Yeah. So, I mean, how can we say we're alone? Yeah, true. And, you know, and, 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 oh, but you know, Chris, what Einstein said, uh, it is impossible for light travel because of the, you know, theory of relativity, right? When from here to there, uh, you, you go to a great distance, mm. travel by light, come back, and everyone else would have aged or mm. died, and then, you, you know, you're still the same age, blah, blah, blah. Sure, no one is talking about traveling by light. Mm -hmm. Look at David Adair, he came up with the electro electromagnetic thing, right? Yeah. And I'm telling you, chances are we have it already. Yeah. Right, and in, if you can interface with a machine that can get you via the speed of thought, yeah, because what's faster than light is that it's the speed of thought, yeah, right. And then you, if you can bend space time, precisely, <laughs> you know, I mean, you get you from one point to another by folding it together, right? Yeah, and correct. you're yeah. there, yeah, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I think that's, that it's not an impossibility. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure we would have bastardized whatever, you know. Yeah, that's right. Whatever that right. could have been recovered in crash recoveries. Correct, I don't know. correct, correct. Yeah, you correct. know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, thanks for being on the show, bro. Most welcome. It's as fun as usual. I mean, I, you're the only one I can sit down and have this chit chat with, you know. Of course. Everyone else will look at me and I go, you fucking freak, <laughs> man. What the, f what the fuck's wrong with you, Chris? You know, get your yeah. mind out of this shit, you're man, this shit, Chris. Man. Yeah. There's more serious things to look into. Yeah. I mean, sure, but until the day, yeah, that's right. Yeah. a big freaking mothership hovers over your house. Yeah. Don't yeah. come knocking and crying. Yeah, don't and fucking screen, call yeah. me, dude, because yeah. your phone will not work. Yeah. <laughs> All the charges will be very high, so. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, yeah. um, um, and, and, 
And that's when we all will have the last laugh, yeah, true, right? True, that's right? And yeah. hope and pray that we're not being invaded. Yes, 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 definitely. You guys have been watching the Chris Hansen conversation. Yes, we sound like a bunch of quacks and we will always sound like a bunch of quacks as to many people, but we really don't care uh, because this is about revealing UFOs in Asia. We're the only one show that you can find covering this topic, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Um, this is Chris Hansen together with my uf resident ufologist, Ignatius Bong, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, hit the damn bell there as well so you'll be notified. And also follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Mm.